This is case number 232494, State of Michigan versus Dale Warner. Appearances, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Jackie Wise on behalf of the people, P78317. Dave McCready on behalf of the people. Good morning, Your Honor. Mary Chartier on behalf of Dale Warner, who's standing to my left. <clears throat> Good morning, Sean Head, also appearing on behalf of Dale Warner. Good morning, Your Honor. Marissa Vinsky on behalf of Dale Warner. Good morning, Your Honor. Lizzie Saylor, paralegal for defense. Thank you. Sir, can you state your name? Uh, Dale Warner. Thank you. Are there any preliminary matters before we begin? Your Honor, we would ask for a mutual sequestration order at this time. Um, however, we would ask, we do have, usually have just the officer in charge stay in the courtroom. We do have two because of the nature of the case and the way it was split up. We would ask permission to allow both of those officers to remain in the courtroom during the preliminary exam. Any objection? Yes, Your Honor. We do agree with mutual sequestration, but we do object to having two officers in the courtroom. My understanding is that Mr. Drurior is the lead investigator on the matter, and Mr. Singleton worked at his direction. Therefore, because he is a witness in the case, we would ask that he be sequestered as well. Thank you. Okay, I'll allow for the officer in charge to remain and the second officer to be sequestered. I will ask that both parties pay attention to their own witnesses. I don't know who's in the audience or what they look like, so make sure that you are sequestering your own witnesses. Thank you, Your Honor. And whenever the people are ready to proceed. Your Honor, I would also move to admit uh, people's proposed one and two under MCL 766.11b. It is the order designating venue and the death certificate in this, in this matter. Your Honor, we object to the order regarding death, we're essentially the death certificate. One of the elements that the court needs to determine is, is there indeed a death here? So the court will need to determine, is Ms. Warner dead? If she is dead, was she murdered? And if she was murdered, who actually murdered her? The death declaration case is a civil matter with a different standard of proof. Mr. Warner did not have the same rights as he possesses in a criminal case in the civil case. We object to that coming in. It is one of the elements that the government needs to prove. So to ask the court to take, I assume, judicial notice of this is, I believe, highly improper. Your Honor, under MCL 766.11b, the rules of evidence apply at the preliminary examination, except the following are not excluded um, by the rules of hearsay and shall be admissible without requirements of the testimony of the author of the report, keeper of the record, or any additional foundation or authentication. And subsection B, a certified copy of any written or electronic order, judgment, decree, docket entry, register of actions, or any written or any record of any court or any government agency of this state. I understand that this was as a result of a civil case. However, the state has issued, and I do have a certified copy of the death certificate, and it is admissible under 766.11b. The death declaration case where Mr. Head is one of the lawyers has been stayed, it's my understanding, in the Court of Appeals, which makes the court taking notice of a death certificate in a case where the Court of Appeals is going to be reviewing that, again, improper. That is one of the elements that the court needs to prove. And I believe what the court will hear through testimony in the next few days is there is no body, there are no body parts, there's no decomposition, massive pool of blood. Whether Ms. Warner is dead is something that the, the government needs to prove, not just submit a death certificate and check mark that box off. Thank 